There's a church on the corner of the street in my town Where the blind lead the blind to salvation They surrender their wills and their ten dollar bills to the sky And it's one nation under God Indivisible with liberty and justice for some And the melting pot's only got soup if you follow the Mr. Brewster, I'd like to see you in my office for a few minutes. You know, that's okay. I'd really rather not. The athletic director called me today. I understand you had a conversation with Terry Brooks. Yeah, that's right. About two days ago. Why on earth would you not have a more seasoned professor with you for that conversation? Because I don't care how good he is at basketball. His performance in my classroom is for me to evaluate and me alone. I told you that failing him was not the only option. You told me that it was my decision. And until you knew that it was Terry Brooks, you didn't have a problem with me failing him. The fact that the student was Terry Brooks is irrelevant. If a student's parents get killed in an automobile accident, or they have a psychotic episode and they end up at Western Psych, or they sleep through uh, Thanksgiving in a snowstorm and miss their final exams, those are all valid reasons to offer the G grade. Yeah, but you're acting like I'm wrong for failing him. No, wrong, not wrong, difficult. You're being difficult, mainly for yourself. Misguided might be a better term to use. You know, you think you're gonna be some type of a hero by making this decision. I realize at this point in my life, heroes and villains, they're often cut from the same cloth. We all know how often Americans like to change clothes. Okay, fine. Let's say I give him the G. What happens to me then? I don't know if I understand what you're saying. What I mean is, as far as I'm concerned, I should fail Terry Brooks. But you seem to be insisting that I don't. Now, this is a matter of personal integrity, so I want to know what incentive do I have to violate my conscience, since that seems to be what you're insisting that I do. You're a TA. A TA has been off a lot more than they can chew. You have no idea how powerful this can become. I'm afraid the outcome of this is not going to be what you anticipate.
B, I'm in here. I don't understand. I told you something like this could happen. They can't do this. Keep reading. And the best part is that in addition to terminating my teaching fellowship, they're also accusing me of blackmailing the chair of the department. And as a result, we're giving all my students this semester A's. Something about giving them the benefit of the doubt due to my lack of academic integrity. Thank you. You know what? Blackmail is a joke. Of course not. It'll be ridiculous. Then they can't do this. It's wrongful termination. Courtney, I'm a grad student with a fellowship, not an executive from Coca-Cola. Yeah. Besides, even if I could sue for wrongful termination, the best I could hope is to get my job back. And? Why would I want that? Why would I want to work for Oden Pope or that English department <laughs> ever again? Duquesne, you're a grad student. We need the money. Is that all you can think about right now, money? If you lose that fellowship, Duquesne, how do you expect to pay for school? Damn it, Courtney, shut the hell up about the money already! Who are you screaming at? Who do you think I'm screaming at? I'm screaming at you! Duquesne, you're not thinking clearly. No, you're the one who's not thinking clearly, because all you can think about is money! Get your finger out of my face! Or you'll do what? I asked you a question! Sit down! I'm sorry. I know you're upset. I'm sorry too, baby. 